So my educational background is in physics, and uh, like most astronomers, I did an undergraduate degree in physics, and I took some astronomy courses as they were available. I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Waterloo, and then I went on to graduate school in physics and astronomy at McMaster University, where I did both a master's and then a PhD in uh, physics and astronomy. And I. Uh, my research was all astronomy based, so I've taken what on my diploma it says physics everywhere, but I've actually done astronomy. Students who are interested in astronomy should definitely make sure they get a lot of physics and math, but increasingly astronomy is broadening out to overlap with other disciplines, so as most people probably realize, one of the hot areas of research in astronomy is the search for life. And increasingly that brings people with expertise in chemistry and biology into astronomy. So there are these new fields, uh, we currently call them astrochemistry and astrobiology, which are a bit of a mouthful. But they draw people who have background in uh, biophysics or biology, chemistry, all sorts of things. So people can actually get into astronomy from a variety of different routes, but traditionally it's physics. And I started off as a theoretician uh, trying to understand how you could use the basic laws of physics to explain how stars form. And then at some point I just became sort of entranced with the idea of actually observing stars forming and switched um, between my master's and my PhD program to studying the actual observations of stars. There's much more to the universe than just hot things that can be seen in visible light. So my area of expertise is actually really cold things, things that emit almost no visible light at all. And with a telescope like this, they appear as completely black. So these are things like big clouds of gas and dust in space that Actually, if you were to look at a star field with one of these clouds in it, you would see it blocking out all of the stars. But if you use a camera that's sensitive to that kind of light, the kind of light that very cold things emit, you'll see not the stars, but the cloud, the gas cloud that's producing this other kind of light, which we call microwave light. So star formation is actually a really, it's an interesting thing to study because it's something we don't know very much about. Uh, very loosely, you can kind of group stars into two categories. Stars like the Sun, which are actually pretty small stars. So people may know that the Sun is its a very large object on the scale of objects in the universe. It's much, much bigger than the Earth. But there are actually stars that are way, way bigger than the Sun, thousands of times larger than our own Sun. And of those two types of stars, we have a pretty good idea how the small ones like the Sun form but we're really not very sure at all how the much larger type of stars form. And that's my area of research, is trying to figure out how these really massive, enormous stars uh, form from big balls of gas and dust in space. So my recent observations are being done with a telescope called Herschel, which is a space telescope. So it's uh, far away from the Earth at a sort of point where uh, Earth's gravity and the Sun's gravity cancel each other and the telescope can just sort of hover there and sit there in space. And it's um, an infrared telescope. It records wavelengths of light, types of light, that uh, are sort of similar to the kind of light that the Sun emits that makes your skin feel warm, right? And it looks for those kinds of light from clouds of gas and dust in space. And I've been using that to study a really enormous cloud of gas and dust near uh, the center of our galaxy, which is forming piles and piles and piles of very large stars, and trying to get as much information about those very large stars as we can. And one of the, the key things we're looking to figure out is whether some clouds of gas are better at forming bigger stars, and some are better at forming smaller stars. So that's very tricky, but that's, that's the kind of thing we're trying to get a handle on right now with this telescope. Well, one thing that makes the University of Toronto different from other astronomy schools uh, in Canada and around the world is that we have a huge concentration of astronomers. We have people here studying just about everything from star formation to how stars work, black holes, they study where galaxies come from, where the universe itself came from. But we also have people who study in three different ways. We have people like me who make observations of the sky. We have a whole separate group of people who do theory. They study um, the laws of physics that govern how these things work. 
And then we have a separate group of people who build new telescopes, and that's pretty unique. There aren't very many universities that have all three of those pieces together. Um, so that, that's one thing that makes this definitely unique, sets us apart.